Yeah, just protect, like be the protectors. We were the strong people. So why are the strongest people on this planet trying to, you know, take advantage of innocent, you know, weaker beings? Um, doesn't make any sense. I'm in this for the animals. I'm not in this for these selfish, half plant-based animal abusing apologists who care more about, you know, the way they look than the way the animals feel. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So this video here is about John Venus. He recently uploaded a video saying, I'm not vegan anymore. Big surprise. It wasn't a surprise to me. It wasn't a surprise probably to a lot of people. He's done this before. Um, this time it looks like he's really serious. He's really like, that's it. He's not going to be a vegan anymore. You know, like a vegan is means you're anti-animal abuse. So he's basically gone from being anti-animal abuse to being a pro-animal abuse. So an animal abuser. And, you know, it's like someone was saying, yeah, you know, I'm anti-racism, and then like the next week they're like, nah, I'm, I'm actually kind of racist, I'm going to introduce a bit of racism into my lifestyle now, or, you know, I'm anti-domestic violence, oh no, I'm going to introduce a little bit of domestic violence into my lo lifestyle now, beat my wife on the weekends, oh, I'm anti-child abuse, yeah, anti-child abuse for five years, and now I'm going to start, you know, paying for children to be abused, and, you know, like, when you're a vegan, you're anti-animal abuse, but a lot of these plant-based um, you know, dieters and, you know, athletes and, you know, they think of veganism as a diet. Veganism is an ethical philosophy. <laughs> I mean, how many times do I have to say this? It's not about your health. It's not about the environment. It's about the animals. It's very clear. Veganism is about the animals. Veganism is a lifestyle which seeks to exclude, as far as is practicable and possible, all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals. Boom. Where does it say Oh, it's about your health, it's a plant, you know, we don't have to go through this. Anyone who follows me knows this. Anyone who, who no understands the true principle of veganism knows this. John Venus keeps forgetting. Now, he made a video a while back going, oh, I don't want to be associated with uh, the word vegan anymore. I don't want to be called a vegan anymore. I don't want to... This is all because of public opinion. This is all because of social pressure. He was too afraid to stand up for what he truly believed in. So he, he sort of, I don't want to be called a vegan anymore. There's some people in the movement that I don't agree with. They're a bit extreme. You know, they're radically against animal abuse. I'm not. I'm so chill. I'm so apologetic. I don't really care about the animals. I care more about my image. So I'm just going to be like disassociated from the world, the world of vegan. Now... He got a lot of backlash for this. John Venus got so much backlash for this. He backpedaled, right? He backpedaled and he took it back and, you know, he was really, like, very confused. And I was like, oh. you know, I felt a bit bad for the guy, to be honest. I felt a bit bad for him at this stage. Now, it comes out a while later that he was actually eating eggs at the time. So he was eating eggs, promoting a plant-based diet, promoting veganism in his whatever weird way he does it. Um, you know, whatever false way he does it because it's not about health or a lifestyle it's about animal abuse it's about the animals this is why it come out i don't want to be associated as a vegan anymore because he was eating eggs at this time and only come out till later so more dishonesty now let's just watch a few clips about john just to get an idea of what he thinks about activism and all these things i consider myself an activist i always have when i went vegan right after watching earthlings I really felt like, you know, dropping fitness and, you know, just going out and talking about these ethical um, issues and talking about factory farming, visiting slaughterhouses and documenting uh, these things. I actually, you know, I, I was dreaming about, you know, putting on ski masks and, you know, rescuing uh, pigs and whatever. Uh yeah, but you never did. And you know, like, yeah, this is what an animal rights activist does. So you kind of, when you watch Earthlings at the start, you you woke up to what was happening to animals and you understand the true principle of veganism. Now, for some reason, you know, you threw all that out the window and because you're afraid of making people uncomfortable, which I'm not, you are, right? You forgot about that principle. You forgot about what happens in Earthlings or something. You, you, you really, you really wishy-washy. Joey is a, a more of a, the, the more in your face, uh, you know, he doesn't go easy on, uh, as easy on people. And I do like, I, I think that it's not a bad thing. I, I still think that the majority of people uh, might be a little bit more offended than intrigued by his approach, but I think that his approach is very necessary as well because it really brings a harsh reality. He just pays lip service to me here. We know what you truly think, John. You truly think that you don't want you don't want this type of activism in the vegan movement, which is why you disassociate yourself from the vegan movement. You don't want animal rights activists out there defending animals like militantly militantly radically against animal abuse because it makes your public image look bad okay tell the truth tell the truth like 
you don't like my style of activism because it makes you feel uncomfortable. There's many vegans in the movement like that or plant-based people in the movement like that. They don't agree with it because they don't understand it. If you talked about the animals more, maybe it would remind you of why you're fucking vegan. Showing slaughter footage and, you know, really getting people to understand the ethical side of things and the reality behind buying meat and animal products is crucial because without that I would never have turned vegan myself, right? I'm always suspicious of people who are vegan but never talk about the animals. You know, it's, it's, it's suspicious. Why don't you talk about the animals? Like, why don't you, you're vegan, you went vegan for the animals. Like John admits he went vegan for the animals. He never talks, he might here and there. Look, I mean, I, to be fair, I don't watch his videos. I think I, I don't like watching his videos because he rarely talks about the animals. Um, but those who talk the least about the animals um, are the most likely to go back to eating them. That's, that's without a doubt. I needed that visual, I needed that uh, reality check and, uh, you know, to be able to detach from my, um, you know, uh, relationship with food and, and family traditions and culture. You needed a reality check. And I think you need another one now. Like, this is what happens, people forget why they're vegan, they get in their own little, you know, lifestyle and don't, they, like me, I'm constantly reminding myself of what goes on to animals, constantly. Because it's, that's the fight, that's the fight. We want to end slaughterhouses. That's the fight. We want to stop animal exploitation. That's the fight. The fight isn't, oh my God, like I'm, I'm worried about my views. If I talk about this, I don't want to put anyone off. You know, that, that's not thinking of the victims. That's thinking of yourself. You come under some fire recently and... Now, I did a podcast with John Venus, which I'm very embarrassed about this podcast. I pride myself on being a genuine person with integrity and I feel like I sat down with a dishonest liar and... Um, I don't say that about many people in the movement, to be honest with you. Um, I felt kind of bad for the guy, and I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Now, my reputation, you know, as an animal rights activist, you know, who cares about animals and cares about justice, is being tarnished by me, you know, pandering to some, you know, maybe plant-based, you know, apologist in a podcast which goes against my principles. Kind of, you, you kind of sort of projected this message that you don't care right. if people exploit and kill animals, but right. I know you personally, I yep. think you went vegan because after watching Earthlings, yep. and can you just explain yourself for those viewers who are a little bit still a little bit confused about that? Oh, 100%. Uh, you know, I, I consider that the, the worst video or piece of content that I made in my life, the most spontaneous. The worst piece of content he made in his life. So because I knew John, um, Venus and I knew he went vegan for the animals originally Like I gave him the benefit of the doubt. That's why I just gave him the benefit of the doubt I thought you know a lot of people they don't have that strength. They don't have the strength They get lost in the wilderness out here and they they just don't focus on the animals And this is why people they can lose a bit of faith and I just thought, thought you know He was going through a hard time. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I thought I'd have a podcast with him now <laughs> John Venus actually contacted me to do content with him at this stage. He goes, hey Joey, I'm in, you know, England, you want to do some content together? And I said, okay, well, let's do a podcast. I'm having a podcast, you want to come down? And he ran down to, to do the podcast. My my inkling on this is that um, I think because he lost so much respect within the animal rights movement, his way of sort of garnering more support within the animal rights community was aligning himself with someone like me, who he doesn't even agree with my activism, let's be honest. John Venus doesn't even agree with my activism. Um, I guarantee you he doesn't. But he wanted to align himself with me because I hadn't lost the entire respect of the entire community for not wanting to call myself vegan, for, you know, throwing the animals under the bus. He's done this to me again when he's messaged me to get on his podcast and I refused to because I just looked at it, looked, unread it and was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go on your podcast. I, I'm losing faith in this person, so I don't want to align myself with him. Yeah. But you know, when you're a social media influencer, I've, I've, I've posted over probably like three to five thousand uh three to five thousand times i believe yep uh and i've never had a post like that right but you know eventually you know something's gonna go wrong you're gonna say something bad you're yep. gonna mess up eventually after three and a half thousand posts the truth's gonna come out that this is all an act i honestly in my heart knew that you do care about what happens to animals oh, and you know it's just that you've chosen this way of spreading the message and yeah. you your advocacy style is unique and you're just less direct right. with the ethical thing. You're more, yeah. hey, th this is what I'm doing, you know, and I, I appreciate that. We need that because some yeah. people, I'm just going to turn them straight over to you. <laughs> now, this is what I regret. You know, you can't read someone's mind whether they truly care about animals. I know I do, but their actions 
speak louder than words. So their behavior is like, okay, I eat a plant-based diet. But when you care about animals, you, you care about their suffering to the point that you speak about it. You say, this is awful. Now, you don't have to be in someone's face. Sometimes, like, when I get a bit worked up, look, I understand. I get a bit worked up. I'm working on that. But, like, I am always for the animals. I speak truthfully. I speak honestly to people. I don't baby them, okay? I don't, I'm not an ap apologist. Here, when I say... I honestly, in my heart, knew that you do care about what happens to animals. Oh. And I honestly, in my heart, know that you do care about animals. Now... I mean, not to the point that he doesn't care about them to the point that he wouldn't eat products from them. And when I show you his video, this comes to light. He, he doesn't care about them enough to, to put their life above his, you know, optimal diet utopia. You're just less direct right. with the ethical thing. You're more, yeah. hey, th this is what I'm doing, you know, and I, I appreciate that. We need that because some yeah. people, I'm just going to turn them straight over to you. <laughs> now... He doesn't speak about the ethical thing, and I said, I'll just turn him straight over to, over to you. I would never turn anyone over to you. I'm, I'm telling the movement right now not to trust you. You're dishonest. You're a liar. Um, you, you care more about your image than you do about what doing what's right. You never speak about the injustice that's happening to animals, even though you claim to care about it, which is a contradiction. You either care about it or you don't. You know, Your behavior shows that. Your behavior shows that. I'm just warning anyone who's watching this video up to this point, not to trust this guy. Not to, don't trust him. Don't trust him what he says. He's proven time and time again that he can't be honest. You can follow him if you want, do whatever you want, but just take everything he says for a grain of salt. The most important thing for me personally is that I know my intentions, I know what my intent is, and I know in my heart that it's good, and yeah. I'm doing everything for the right reasons. And as long as I know that, and my closest friends and family know that, that's, I'm happy. And, uh, you know, I think the truth and my intentions will reveal themselves yep. eventually. Your truth and your intentions will reveal themselves eventually. Now, I don't know how what your intent is in your heart. I mean, your actions should show that. <laughs> your actions should show your intent. When you make a video, you say something that could be, you know, could be, like, could offend someone, but you say it because it's the right thing. You say it because it's the right thing, even though you've offended people, you know, even though you're not focusing as much on being liked as you are with doing what's right. That's how I know your good intentions. Oh, wow, he said that. I mean, it's true. It's true, but, like, look how this has got this person angry, but he's he's been honest here. And that's how, you know, like, your true intentions come out in the end. Are you still speaking for the animals? Do you really care about this movement? That Even through the hard times, are you still pushing through? Because let's face it, if you didn't have these values in your heart, you could have gone ex-vegan carnival <laughs> ages ago and got millions and millions of views <laughs> and sold millions and millions of programs and, you know, but you've obviously got your values aligning with with what you do that's why you're yeah. not going to budge on that but, yeah. yeah no i mean like you know the, the the thing is media you know this is how it works right like drama sells yeah. and you know you're not going to budge on that you could have gone ex-vegan got millions and millions of views sold millions of programs do you see what i mean he knows that and i'll tell you why because his ex-vegan video which is coming up he tries to get people to go oh you know there's many things coming up Wait for it. But do you see how he stutters and stumbles here after I say this? You've obviously got your values aligning with what you do. That's why yeah. you're not going to budge on that. But yeah. yeah. No, I mean, like, you know, the, the, the thing is media, you know, this is how it works, right? Like drama sells yeah. and, you know. See that big stumble? I put him on the spot there, didn't I? I put him on the spot because I was like, you know, in your heart, you're, all, you're doing what's right. And it's aligning with what you do. No, Joey, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean John Venus feels a certain way. Just because I feel a certain way about animals and how I'm doing what's right in my heart and I won't budge, that doesn't mean John Venus won't. Now, this was before he came out saying... He, this, this podcast was before he came out saying, I've been eating eggs. You know what I mean? So I didn't know, I didn't know that. That came out later. The other day, John Venus confessed to eating eggs about a year ago, and he came up with the most ridiculous excuses I've ever heard. So when he come out with that eggs video, I was like, you're a bullshit artist. You are a bullshit artist. I don't want anything to do with you. Just because you have integrity in your heart doesn't mean everyone else does. I'm really starting to become suspicious of those people who never, never talk about the blatant disgusting cruelty that happens to animals every single day and they're happy to just go on with their life and not mention it at all. You know, I always try to go through, uh, play these psychological things and only make content that I think will be the best 
uh, for you know the the non vegans to be interested in the lifestyle. So uh, John Remy said like you only you try to play psychological games with people and only make videos that's going to get non vegans interested in the lifestyle. So basically you're, you're saying you're a massive psychological warfare pandering machine where you just try to pander to people to make them like you um, instead of just being boom this is the truth. I'm not going to lie to you, animals are being abused and tortured and murdered so you can eat their bodies. Just got to stop. Here, now I'm going to do a body workout routine and show you a plant-based diet and give you alternatives. Why don't you do both? Rarely. Now, in John's words... And only make content that I think will be the best uh, for, you know, the, the non-vegans to be interested in the lifestyle. Okay, so he only makes content that's going to get non-vegans interested in the lifestyle. Uh, when he makes a video, I don't want to be vegan anymore, I don't, you know, I, I was eating eggs, I lost faith, and this and that. You're just making people feel, like, really in doubt. I'm not here to uh, judge you for doing whatever you feel is right for you, your family, and your community. I'm not here to tell you what is objectively right or what, what is wrong. And I'm not here to listen to your, uh, you know, arguments and to your uh, opinions either. Okay. You take a study and uh, you use that study to come to a conclusion, but then another person with a whole another uh, opinion will take that same exact study and come to a like uh, the opposite conclusion to someone else. So John and Venus is actually a research scientist now. He knows how to interpret data. He actually knows more than all of the plant-based doctors combined. Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. Uh, John McDougall, Dr. Michael Greger and Nutrition Facts, Dr. Garth Davis, Dr. Michael Clapper, Dr. Kim uh, Williams, the ex-president of the American College of Cardiology and Chief of Cardiology, True North Health Center, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and the NHS, the list goes on and on and on. There are so many people who can interpret data who work within um, plant-based nutrition that are much more qualified to speak on this than John Venus is. I mean, like I said before, I mean, I'm not putting down anyone who doesn't have this high level of intellect or even can't interpret data. Interpreting data is very complicated. I'm not very good at it, but I know there are some people who are very good at it. And, you know, I always go to the experts to interpret the data for me. I don't go to John Venus. I don't go to someone who focuses more on how he looks and selling his diet programs and pandering to people uh, to go to him for any type of uh, nutrition advice or medical advice or really important uh, nutrition advice as well. I would go for the experts. So I think that goes for everyone, like every single activist who is all about ethics knows that you know you can be healthy on a vegan diet because if not there is no way anyone would uh you know go for this lifestyle it was acknowledging that there's you know hundreds of thousands millions of other vegans who are doing fine and if they really ran into problems you know and they were suffering then they would go back to eating animals to save their life basically or to alleviate a great amount of suffering for themselves and they couldn't possibly do it it's just not true that you would put a sentient animal's life before your own that's not going to happen we can think that uh you know we are that selfless but if that were the case we as humans would have died out a long time ago we are always looking after ourselves and our own before uh you know trying to you know share our empathy with other beings and and creatures so this is another video, I'm chopping back and forth to another video that he made on vegan activism, but he's like, it doesn't make sense that you would put another sentient life before your own. No one's asking anyone to die. He's, he's talking about a survival situation, John Venus. You're talking about a survival situation? Most people, if the only option is for you to kill a fish or you to suffer and die, they're going to kill the fish. But we're not talking about that, are we, mate? We're talking about just a basic level of well-being. You know, a basic level of health. Basic level of well-being where you don't have to you know, murder animals. Like, I'm talking about just giving them the right to life and choosing alternatives, and you know that. It's not a life and death uh, scenario to be vegan. A lot of times when you're vegan, especially for me, you are in this bubble. You are in the mindset of, you know, we are doing something that is ethical. We're doing this because it feels right in, in every single way. And this is my perspective. And because this is my perspective, we're only gonna listen to other people with the same perspective that have the same mission to eliminate animal suffering, to live a plant-based lifestyle, a vegan diet. Like a lot of people haven't connected with what happens to animals. So it's gonna feel like you're in a bubble because no one exposes themselves to what happens to animals more than vegans do, more than animal rights activists do. So of course we're going to be constantly reminded of that. And that's going to be our main motivation, 100%. But we've also got multiple experts 
science coming out like every single week, new science and, you know, big organizations peer reviewing the studies as well that he's talking about us. Oh, one person comes to one conclusion, another person comes to another conclusion. That's what a peer review is for. That's why they peer review, they get a bunch of people to review the data so that they come to a consensus and then they release the study. You know, and yes, and some people do have that as a mission to eliminate animal suffering, to eliminate animal exploitation. Do, do you? It's either vegan, pro-vegan, or it's anti vegan and pro meat eating and pro murder and death and, and these things. And this is the mindset that is, you know, it, I was in that mindset myself. So I know that that is the, the dominant mindset for a lot of people. Yeah, because you're either vegan or you're paying for animals to be tortured and killed. It's not hard to understand. Maybe you need to watch Earthlings again. Maybe you need to sit through the entire length of Dominion to, uh, to understand this logic. If you pay for animal products, you're paying for animals to be exploited and killed. What's so hard for th to understand about that? It is either one or the other. I have never claimed that the science you know, proves that a, a vegan diet, a 100% vegan diet is the best for optimal health. What does he mean by optimal health? Like... Keep saying optimal health. It's, it's like he drinks energy drinks. He constantly makes videos of him smashing down vegan junk food. He's not always exercising. You know, sometimes he has, you know, months off of exercise I've seen. You know, so why, if you're so concerned with optimal health, why do you have massive junk food cheat days and drink energy drinks full of caffeine and junk? You're not that concerned with optimal health. That's like taking a plant-based diet to the next level and, you know, and being very rigid. And no one's like that. I have vegan burgers all the time. You have vegan burgers all the time. No one's really concerned with this optimal utopian health. They're concerned with the general amount of well-being, you know, as long as you're not destroying your health to the point that you're suffering. But, you, you know, you've got a general amount of well-being and you can have maybe a better than normal health status where you can have a bit of junk food here and there. Who the hell wants to be optimal, utopian, you know, magical diet all the time? It's those people who are so focused on, oh, the raw lifestyle and fasting and having this optimal utopian vision. They're the people who fall off. I've seen it time and time again. All the ex-vegans, they were focusing on some optimal health. Like, I've got to be some amazing picture of health. The truth is you'll never get there. You've seen it with Tim Sheaf. He, he always wanted to be like some magical being, you know, like, oh my God, I feel amazing all the time. And you should just be happy with a general amount of well-being, you know, steer away from heart disease by avoid, avoiding oils and saturated fats, have a, a high uh, whole foods plant-based diet, and you're gonna be good. Um, you know, I was skeptical at first, um, but it turns out that it was, you know, I progressed even faster after switching to a plant-based diet. I struggled with uh, digestive issues. I had a, you know, a pretty severe case of constipation often. Uh, so that was like removed instantly within two weeks. I was like feeling lighter and healthier. Uh, I also gained a lot of strength in the gym. You're not sacrificing gains at all by switching to a plant-based diet. It's exactly the same, if not better. Well, there you go, straight from his mouth. There is extremely little science, and I am not convinced at all by the science that is used to support those claims. John Venus is a expert on reading data now. He's a, he's a scientific expert. You can't be healthy, optimally healthy on a vegan diet. You can't, well, can you be moderately healthy on a vegan diet? Um, can you live long on a vegan diet? Why doesn't he ever present his opposing research or point out the flaws in the studies? So like, if you really did have a problem with the studies, why doesn't he personally, if he's so good at interpreting data better than uh, Dr. Gregor, Dr. Neil Barnard, the Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine, uh, Dr. Clapper, Dr. Garth Davis, if he's so good at interpreting the data, why doesn't he interpret the data for us and tell us what's wrong with it? I know why. Because if he does, he's going to sound like a fool and he's going to get destroyed by all those people who know what they're talking about. We're all trying to come from a place of compassion and love and trying to make the world a better place. You're literally going back to eating animal products. Eating animal products is one of the cruelest things anyone ever does. You're, you're, de you're deliberately supporting suffering, death and violence and f for no you know, justifiable reason. This is not something that I, as a parent, as a father, am comfortable with doing. I'm not comfortable of dismissing, you know, hundreds of thousands of years or even millions of years of, 
a certain, um, you know, eating pattern. You're not comfortable as a father to make your child vegan, but you're comfortable to teach him to abuse and kill animals or to eat the flesh of animals. So you're teaching him something like, hey, you know, we've been doing it for millions of years. You know, we've been killing animals for millions of years. I'm not comfortable teaching my ch child not to kill animals and to harm animals. I'm actually for, all for compassion and love. As you know me, John Venus, I'm all for compassion and love. But I don't want to teach my child not to uh, be cruel to animals and to harm animals, even though I'm going to feed him animal products, because we've been doing it for hundreds of thousands of years. That's the, that's the reason. We've, we've always done it. We've always done a lot of cruel things, John. You know? We've always killed each other. We've always raped each other. Human beings have always, you know, murdered each other. Cannibalism was happening for thousands of years, you know? Like, there's people doing crazy things in survival situations. But because of John Venus's, you know, change in life choice, we should continue doing those cruel and horrific things. Instead, do something that requires supplementation to make possible, like B12, because, again, I used to think that you can get B12 from the soil and water, and that it, there is no scientific evidence for that to be true. Here goes about the scientific evidence claims here. You know, John, you never provide your evidence. Are you gonna present a study that is flawed or something? It's hilarious how he's going on about, <laughs> you have to supplement B12 on a vegan diet when meat eaters' diets are supplemented with B12 as well. They feed it to the animals, they inject it into the animals. Even when you go to the most high-grade, pasture-raised, grass-finished beef, they still supplement those animals with B12. They inject it into them, they put it into the feed, they give them nutrient supplements so that it's in their flesh. So why, don't, why not just eat the supplement directly? And there's also a plant-based um, source of B12 called duckweed. Have you seen that? Duckweed? No? Don't care? I have had some question marks because of personal experiences, because of my real life observations. So he's basically saying that because of his personal experience, uh, that's evidence that the vegan diet doesn't work. It's basically an anecdote. We've heard this before. We keep hearing the same thing. And I don't want to give any personal information, so I'm not going to talk in detail about any of that. His whole channel is based on basically exposing his private life to everyone. He's always given personal information, but in this instance, he's not because he's lying. And if he gave us the reason, let's just say he gave us a reason. Oh, I've got stomach issues. Oh, I've got this issue. He knows that it will get destroyed. This is why he's not telling us. He hears it's this, this health issue and everyone's just going to laugh. I think it's more paranoia, conspiracy theories. Oh, we've been doing it for millions of years. We shouldn't stop. Oh, we're going to de-evolve like all of these conspiracy theories that are based in no evidence. I don't feel comfortable with my kid uh, being vegan. I cannot continue that lifestyle myself. You know, I don't feel comfortable with my kid being vegan. I can't present any data to prove that it's harmful for kids, but I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, so therefore, because I don't feel comfortable with my kid being vegan, I'm going to go back to abusing animals too. Granted, I'll still, you know, do everything in my power to do what I feel is best uh, with my moral compass for the environment, the planet, the animals, and all of that stuff. If you're not vegan, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. What are you going to do? You get, go get some free-range eggs from the local farmer. When all of those free-range egg-laying hens come from a parent breeding shed where they spike the flock, they get roosters to go in there and to, you know, mate with the chickens over and over again till they're exhausted. And then when the roosters are exhausted, they cull them off and then they, they introduce more roosters to mate with those uh, same chickens so they can keep producing fertilized eggs and they go off to free range farms, organic farms, backyard farms and cage farms. So all of the eggs, fertilized eggs come from the same parent breeding sheds. And we all know what happens at hatcheries by now. They get separated based on sex and the males will go into a macerator, a big blender, blend them up alive or they get suffocated in a garbage bag or gassed. You're going to support that industry? Is that what it is? Eggs? Is it the fishing industry where you're going to drag fish out of the ocean by their face where they suffocate and die? Um, you know, the most of the animals on Earth uh, that are killed and eaten are fish. Uh, one to three trillion. Destroying the oceans. You know, what is it? Which animal product are you going to choose? You're going to kill a fish? You're going to kill a few fish? Which is it? Uh, you know, you're going to murder a sentient being because, you know, you can't interpret data properly or you're having some anecdotal issues that you don't want to go to an expert to fix. What is it? Either way, you're going to be abusing animals. And I don't care if, you know, someone watching feels extremely offended because it's not about you, it's not about me. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about the animals. That's what veganism is about. Exactly. It's about the animals. So where do they get left here? On your plate? And, and confirmed my belief that the vegan diet is the optimal, the healthiest diet ever, right? You can look at children's health pediatric journals. And if you look at some of these papers in children's health pediatric journals, 
None of them say that vegan or vegetarian diets are bad for children. They never recommend people to not feed their kids vegan or vegetarian diets. Vegan Gains is very well versed in, in health research, much more trusting than John Venus when it comes to, you know, reviewing data and things like that. So I would go check out uh, Vegan Gains' video, which I'll leave linked down below, and you can just watch his rebuttal. I'm not scared of getting flagged for any of this. I've done this, you know, several times in the past, and I, I just don't care. You just don't care. You've said that before. <laughs> My closest friends uh, eat meat. They don't... Uh, you know, care about whether or not a animal goes through certain things. I just, I don't care. I don't care what people do in their own life in terms of, uh, you know, dietary choice. I don't care if you don't, you know, care about the environment. I don't care if you don't care about your own health. I don't care about animals. It's fine. I don't care. You know, yeah, you're going to get flack for this, mate, but you're just going to get more flack for just people just thinking you're just a dishonest liar and, you know, they're just you know, basically just whatever faith they did have in you, they just probably have lost again anyway. And they're not going to be too surprised because that's what happens, mate. If you expose some level of dishonesty, if you start, you know, if you start making up bullshit excuses, people are just going to lose respect for you. I'm not scared of getting flack for any of this. I've done this, you know, several times in the past. And it's interesting how, like, he says, I'm not scared of getting flack for any, any of this, but he hid my comment on his video. And the reason I know he hid it is because I, I left the comment um, on his video and it didn't have any likes but other people were getting likes and it's funny Joey Carbstrong didn't get any likes on his comment and that's because simply there's, a, there's an option for you to hide the comment and yeah if you're not scared of getting flack why couldn't you receive the flack from me that was one of the motivations actually for making this video because I, I couldn't leave my comment on his video to just disassociate myself from this person publicly so I thought this has pissed me off I'm gonna have to make a video to just publicly say I don't align myself with this person. People can do whatever they want to support their own biases and to feel superior to me or to any other people who choose differently than them. That is up to everyone to do. You feel so superior to animals that because you've got some you know, fabricated health issue that you can't talk to experts about and you're such an expert on science that you're gonna, you feel so superior to animals that you're gonna destine them to a life of exploitation to feed you and your family harm, exploitation and cruelty to feed your family. You're the one who's acting superior. But it's just not right. It's not a, a compassionate way of doing things. It's just not right. It's just not a compassionate way of doing things, you know, like, you know, it's acting superior to those who treat animals as inferior is not right, you know. Um, it's not a compassionate way of doing things, even though I'm choosing not to be vegan, I'm going to start eating. Who knows what he's eating? Who knows? Who knows if he's going to go full carnivore? I mean, he's so easily misled, this guy, that he probably might. Um, so you, you don't dare talk about compassion, you know, when you're about to treat animals like shit. And it's not a, a, a way that reflects the core principles of veganism that got me attracted to the whole thing in the first place of compassion and love and all these things. Veganism's got nothing to do with compassion and love. This is where the misconception lies. Oh, veganism is about being a nice person, about being compassionate and loving. You can be an arsehole and be vegan. You can be compassionate and loving and be vegan, all right? Vegan is specifically to do with the abuse and cruelty that happens to animals and animal exploitation. That's simple. You can be an arsehole and be against uh, child abuse. There's a lot of arseholes that, that don't abuse children, all right? You don't have to be loving and compassionate to not abuse children. You just have to agree with the simple idea that exploiting and abusing the innocent is wrong and immoral, and you boycott it. This is what got me attracted, love and compassion. This is what I mean, this mindset about love and compassion. It's, it's about justice, fairness, and doing the right thing. To everyone who watches and follows along this channel, and I hope that you guys uh, can stick around because there's so many more things and, and the journey has just begun. I mean, there is there's a lot more to come. So this is it, there's a lot more to come, guys. Remember what I said in my podcast to him and he sort of stuttered? Because let's face it, if you didn't have these values in your heart, you could have gone ex-vegan carnival <laughs> ages ago and got millions and millions of views and sold millions and millions of programs. And He knows that by doing this, he's going to get more views. People are going to be like, oh, well, you know, the vegan community won't watch my stuff because they think I'm a dishonest liar and lost faith in me. So maybe if I, if I disassociate from the vegan movement, say I'm not vegan anymore, people are going to be watching me for the drama, I'm going to get more views. He recently, uh, Dr. Michelle Lowe put up on her video that John Venus uh, recently become a My Protein Ambassador, which is a non-vegan company. Um, they do vegan options too, so, you know, but 
he's a my protein ambassador so maybe it's a little bit of like public image thing he's trying to do you know i, don't, I just don't trust the guy talks more about himself than he does about the animals he just he's just so full of himself that um he, he cares more about what his friends think in public image than he does about doing what's right he thinks vegan is about love and compassion and not about justice and fairness and doing the right thing um you know it's just it's just all a facade I have no apologies to give to anyone i think that this is a very very good thing why don't you apologize to the fucking animals and i think that you guys um you know are in for a very interesting journey ahead if you want to follow along you guys are in for a very interesting journey if you want to follow along see it's all a ploy to get more views and get people to you know i'm not vegan i'm not going to tell you why i'm not vegan i'm going to keep that private even though nothing else in my life is private look i literally had to make this video just to to disassociate from him i take back anything that i said uh, i gave him the benefit of the doubt i was wrong i'm sorry for that you know i'm i'm in this for the animals i'm not in this for these selfish half plant-based animal abusing apologists who care more about you know the way they look than the way the animals feel so i just want to take a second to thank and um you know acknowledge everyone that is proactively fighting for this cause because as we know it's an important one and it's not going to go anywhere unless we put our best efforts forward to push for a better planet so i hope you appreciate then john why i made this video because you support activists, right? And you're now an animal abuser. So I'm gonna do some activism here and teach people why they shouldn't abuse animals. I've got an idea that he might go for the, the free range eggs, organic eggs and, you know, wild caught fish and grass fed beef where a cow's shot in the skull. I mean, I just don't know what animal product he's going to choose to, to be ethical. It's just, you know? But yeah, the reason I'm making this is because I have a, a responsibility to defend the animals that John Venus wants to now abuse to feed his family. So I'm just gonna leave you with a few things John said a few years ago when I interviewed him, and I'm just gonna leave them here to remind John and to remind everyone else why we don't uh, do this to animals, you know. There's always another option. Speak to experts, don't get advice off of airheads like John Venus, you know. Um, and yeah, like, I hope you guys understand why I, had to, why I thought I felt responsible to make this video, and I'll leave you with this. Seeing, you know, actual real footage of these animals uh, you know just like minutes before getting slaughtered just really connected with me you could see their their suffering and fear like just in their eyes just as you would with your own pets and I own a dog as well so I just I just couldn't you know ignore this anymore so yeah I just decided to change it there and then like that's it for me there is nothing manly about eating meat when you actually think about it when you see these uh, you know uh, the issues that we face today when you see the cruelty that we're causing these animals there's nothing manly about pushing your power over someone else who is you know incapable of defending themselves you know just protect like be the protectors we were the strong people so why are the strongest people on this planet trying to you know take advantage of innocent you know weaker beings